This is uh, an image of people I consider to be controlled narratives. And I'm distinguishing calling them controlled narratives as opposed to fakes or frauds simply because, well, they are giving out a certain amount of information that is meant to drip feed people in certain directions and into certain belief systems. Now this is by no means an all intensive list. These were ones that just came off the top of my head. David Icke, Zen Gardner, Alex Jones, Lee Carroll or someone um, some people might know him as Cryon, Finney Eastwood, Richie Allen, Len Horowitz, that's just another picture of um, Ike and uh, Gardner together, which I don't think Gardner is even his last real last name. Uh, my favourite, just a clown, Stephen Greer, or Steve, yeah, whatever his name is, Michio Kaku, Bashar, uh, Daryl Anker, Einstein. Yes, you might be wondering about why I've got Einstein on there. He's he um, he's a he's a controlled narrative. What he um, brought out is much like what Len Horowitz was given information to release to the public and took credit for it. But uh, that's another video. Max Egan, Ken O'Keefe which again, O'Keefe is not his real name, Laura Eisenhower and um, Emery Smith uh, and all these others that are super soldiers associated with Gaia TV, David Wilcox, Miles Johnson of Bases and of course everyone recognises the Obama family and of course uh, the favourite royal couple Oops, sorry, it, it keeps flashing up down the bottom. Uh, down the bottom is um, James Caspold and uh, Max Spears, and uh, basically any super soldiers that have come out. There's a couple of females that came out, um, but uh, these, as I said, these were just names that came off the top of my head. Um, Neil Armstrong, because the whole moon thing is a controlled narrative. Um, Kerry Cassidy, all right, she's not quite as controlled as all the others. She's working under a controlled narrative and uh, you can hear it in her voice that she's working under the strain of it. And Project Camelot, yes, I love their one-eye symbolism too. <laughs> um, Jordan Peterson, uh, yeah, People might wonder why I'm singling him out again. He was kind of like Max. Um, good message to begin with, but then uh, when you start listening, I mean, even just the look on his face, he's, he's damaged goods. And when he explains about why he even got into psychology, it was probably to understand his own psycho psychopathy. So, yes, he's um, a controlled narrative. And this guy, I oh, keep wanting to call him Knight, but his name's uh, Robert David Steele. And of course, Benjamin Fulford. And this, this creepy meathead here. Um, what's his name? Joe Rogan. And controlled narratives. Your flat earth, your concave. I'd never even heard of mud floods until it came out of Max Egan's mouth. And uh, the extinction level events that took part um, that happened in the 1800s where basically wiped everybody out and the earth was taken over by children it's kind of like a Peter Pan story on the island with the, the kids being growing up without any adults around and they were called foundlings and it's all associated with this Tartaria or Tartaria whatever you call it I mean, you'd have to ask Max, that's his storyline, that's his mud floods and Tartaria thing. 
And I'll put Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and gold and silver purchases down there as controlled narratives because seriously, the um, the illusionary world of um, imaginary money is Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and people who are getting certificates for gold and silver purchases. Um, if the if the internet goes down, say for example, how are you going to reclaim or spend any of your Bitcoin or your cryptocurrency or even claim any of your certificates back? Now, if you're not having certificates and you've actually purchased gold or silver, you've actually got to consider that if you're buying it because you can't use money to trade with somebody else, you've got to consider what other people, ordinary people, are going to consider as valuable. And they're not going to consider gold and silver valuable. It serves no purpose in survival mode. Because if you're getting to the stage where um, this the economy is undoubtedly going to get a lot worse, I've already started to um, encounter problems getting money out at certain supermarkets or my cards declined even though the cash is in there and you can go to the bank and draw the money out but there seems to already be something starting to happen within the systems with ordinary um, debit or visa cards I don't know what visa cards are like I don't have any of those I've only got a, a card to access my account so there's already um, not only myself but my son has also experienced it where you, you think how could the money have disappeared you come home and you check and you make sure yeah the money is in there you know it's in there so why why is it happening you know, it, it happened again today it's uh, it only happened started happening a couple of days ago but uh, you need to consider that even cash money what value is that going to have if everything fully collapses? The only currency that will be of any value is that which will help other people, which is food, water, health, um, clothes, um, the necessities in life. And, it, you know, if someone's got clothes and and they want to swap it for some food or something like that and you've only got gold and silver it's like well I'm sorry I can't wear that or I can't eat it so you have to consider the value of where all these people are telling you to to invest in Bitcoin and the thing is that um, on Max Egan's website he takes in um, Bitcoin donations all the time and I understand why now because I tried to sign up to library.tv like Max is signed up there now I signed up no problem went to create a channel and it said I do not have enough funds to do that it's like what yeah I've got to have some kind of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or something like that now because I've never bought into this rubbish you know, I thought, well, hey, this is just another means of monetizing and bringing in um, all of uh, the videos. Every single view is earning bitcoins. And you need not only uh, cryptocurrency to start a channel. I thought, all right, I won't start a channel. I'll just try and add a bit of a description to the profile that I've got. It wouldn't even let me do that without any money and it's like are you kidding me so could you imagine how much um, Bitcoin it takes or this cryptocurrency to actually upload a video and when you see all these videos and then there's all this representation of how much you know cryptocurrency reward is coming back to that person for uploading that video it's a business and it's an invisible business one that you can actually watch on an, on BitChute and, and not be giving to a freeloader. But uh, yeah, it's kind of um, 
like uh, Max Egan also recommends uh, Jeff Berwick, I think it is, the dollar vigilante. Again, more cryptocurrencies. And if he's not referring you to um, cryptocurrency people that are always economic and let's make more money in this system because, you know, it seems to be outside of the man. It's, oh, you people, seriously. You're all digging for gold and money. Have you not realised that it is, it is easier for a rich man to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for him to get into heaven? And if you don't understand the meaning of that saying, well then, you're probably materialistic like these boys are too, and girls. I've got um, specific reasons for um, not trusting certain ones. I, um, take Obama, for example, Barack Obama. He was someone, because I hadn't watched the news and you know, I wasn't, I was raising kids, I had a very busy life, I I watched Star, and I don't want to watch the news because you know what, whatever shit's going on out there in the world, I don't want that dumped in my plate as well. So when I did um, get a bit of, start getting a bit of time to myself and catching up with things and I found out Barack Obama was the president of America, it's like, what? I kept getting him confused with Osama bin Laden because I really didn't see much difference between him and Osama bin Laden who when every time you'd see him in the newspapers there'd be a, a different photograph it's like what they it's like they think all Asians look the same they must think that all Arabs look the same but they don't and then I saw Michelle Obama and it was the first, I'll tell you, the first thing that went through my head is, that's a bloke. That's what went through my head. It's a bloke. And I didn't think anything of it because, you know, so what? You know, if Obama wants to be married to a, a, a bloke that's posing as a woman, that's, that's his business. And, yeah, it's a bit different, but, you know, I kind of figure that, it's probably not the first transvestite in the Oval Office yeah, or in politics or in Hollywood or anywhere like that. So, you know, and I thought nothing of it. And then about, oh, a couple of months later, I came across this video and they were saying that Michelle Obama is a man and, was, and they were trying to, they showed all these different videos and everything and, it's like, really, why are you trying to prove to everybody something that, you know, either you can see it or you can't? I mean, I could see it the instant I looked at, well, I can't say, she is representing as a woman, but as I said, the first thing that went through my head was, that's a guy. See, I do like to watch a lot of different shows, and when I had Star, I, um, watched a lot of um, RuPaul's Drag Race because uh, a lot of these shows would give you an insight into the mentality of people and I know it's not the mentality of people in unfilmed circumstances but it's also a mirror into what they want to project to the public because uh, like with Big Brother and uh, all of these other ones they know they're being filmed so you're not getting honest human beings or honest reactions you are getting scripted and manufactured responses and people who are very deliberately perhaps even in a lot of circumstances going against what they would actually say just to make it so that other people would think that they're a nice person or whatever so my um, version of controlled narratives isn't that they are fakes, is that um, they, they are controlling the narrative in certain areas. They are revealing certain information, but then, as I've noticed too, that their counter-arguments to things that will come up in the alternative 
whole broad area of alternative, you know, that encompasses so many things, that uh, it's actually doing harm to those that are still a little bit vulnerable because when you do start diving into all this information and you um, you have to open your eyes to it I mean you can either say no I don't want to know and walk away or once you start looking you you find that it's just one thing after another after another after another after another and it just keeps going on and on and on I mean if I had the time this would be a video running with many many pages and I just skimmed what's on the top and of course the controlled narrative of the royal couple because we know why um, well, everybody loved Di, Princess Diana. And they're working through William and Kate to put a good front on the royal family to make something that's very sick and archaic and completely unnecessary in a modern, in a modern era to have the equivalent of, well... I'll use Max Egan's words, a nanny. You tell me, what is the purpose? She won't get politically involved in anything. And in a lot of human rights cases, I've seen her decline to get involved because she thinks it's a political issue. So other than taking money off people, and owning England and Australia and Canada and New Zealand and well I think she pretty well got kicked out of Africa or her dad did you know what does she do for people there is still this ritualistic sick process that goes on that you can see through the um, Scottish rites and uh, the even the ceremony of the coronation now, very shortly, within the next couple of years, the Queen's got to step down or she's going to pretend to die or whatever. Um, and William will step up. Now, in this modern era, there is no need for all this pomp and ceremony of sitting on the actual threshing stone that came from the, the uh, dome in, in Jerusalem where the Ark of the Covenant and all of this other is all tied in. And all the sim symbolic regalia of, you know, the mace and, and the crown and all the symbols that they take as authority over all mankind that gives them the right. It's like their own little game and their own little play, but they've got the power. I mean, they've got a ridiculous amount of money and control in the world and what do we actually get out of them in return for it oh we get nice smiling faces and they you know they help out charities and donate you know what it's the ones that actually donate to all the charities you should watch out for because they're protesting too much and trying to hide the fact that they're really not very nice people but the more you donate to places the more it seems like you're such a nice person for giving all that away without even thinking for a minute wow so that's a good tax perk isn't it because any tax donation in Australia over two dollars is still don't, I don't know whether it's still that way it might even um, be less but any tax donation over two dollars is tax deductible this is why businesses donate to charities because it's tax deductible and it reduces the amount of tax a company has to pay. So if they donated a million dollars to a charity, that's a million dollars off their income that they don't have to pay tax on. So for them, it's a win-win. They get tax perks and they get the, oh, aren't you a nice guy for giving all that money away? It's all a fake out. 
So I'm not going to make this a long video. I just wanted to introduce these faces and some of the reasons behind why um, they are controlled narratives. And I've introduced deliberately different areas, not just entertainment, but um, politics and science. I mean, Michio Kaku and Einstein um, Einstein <laughs> and uh, to a certain degree Dr. Len Horowitz um, they're pushing science in the wrong direction and making people believe things oh trust me this is this well Nassim Harriman has pretty much showed that E equals MC squared is an incomplete formula so even though Einstein was actually taking the credit for something that somebody else did, which is another video, I'm going to tell that in. Um, Einstein was one of these ones that was controllable. I didn't even know he was married, but um, when I found out uh, that he's, he had a wife, that was like, yep, that's where it came from, her and Tesla actually came up with these rudimentary equations. You don't think she could actually talk to that fruitcake there, Einstein, who's always out trying to pick up women. And yes, he's in the Freemasons Club, works at the patent office, stealing other people's patents. Well, not stealing them, uh, reporting to his bosses and they would take over the patents to ensure that they had control over what was released to the public and what wasn't. So, yes, very much a dangerous controlled narrative Einstein was. So I'm going to leave it at that for today and uh, I'll catch you next time.